Oh, now that is a sight for sore eyes. We're back at Epcot. It never feels real. I never truly feel like I'm at Disney World until I see Spaceship Earth. Oh my gosh, I'm so overwhelmed almost. It's the first time I've been here since they finally unveiled the Epcot fountain and they've completely refinished this entrance plaza, finally moving the Leave a Legacy project outside of the gate over there. And everything just looks wonderful. Look at those Epcot flags flying in the breeze. Spaceship Earth is bringing a tear to my eye. The music out here is awesome. After one year away in California, I feel like I could just stay in this entrance entrance plaza all day and just be happy. But of course, there's no time for sitting. There's a lot to do today because today is the first day of Epcot's Flower and Garden Festival. Normally, I'm always in Epcot right before or right after Flower and Garden. I think this might be one of the few times I've ever been here when the festival was in full bloom, no pun intended. So I just can't wait to soak it all in. Wow, there's so many little changes already. Last time I was here, they had already made a lot of progress towards their new retro Epcot, but there was definitely still a lot more of the old Communicore building left over than there is today. Wow. Wow, they really must have built that building to last. They don't make them like they used to. So they're still having to reroute people through this new side entrance, which is cool. I just, for some reason, I thought they'd be done with this by now. Well, I guess it's been a hard year for everybody. Wow, look at that. Dude, it was so rainy and stormy this morning, and now it's ended up being so beautiful out here. I feel way more like I'm in a garden than a theme park, which is, I guess, why there's no better place to host the Flower and Garden Festival than Epcot. Luckily, Allie has already done all the research and made a list of all the gluten-free food treats for me. I have skipped breakfast and I am ready to grub, grub, grub-a-dub-dub. -dub. Oh, even the stuff that's always here is looking so great to me. Every planter looks so exciting, even the stroller parking sign planter. But I think I'm starting to see some festival-specific stuff over here. Look at this, past these giant crayons, we got some butterfly fun pick opportunities. Oh, look, the angel finally has wings. They've got big ones for the adults and then there's tiny ones for the kids. I'm very distracted because as a graphic designer for years and years I'm just as fascinated with all the new signage as I am with all the festival decorations like these topiaries. We all know that Justin Scard loves himself some topiaries. You know since some of these topiaries are the same every year I always wonder when they go to store these things do they take care of them and keep them growing all year long or do they have to wait till right before the festival and get them replanted again? I gotta look around maybe there's a pamphlet somewhere. Oh dude look at this. Yes! My dad raised us on the barrels of monkeys every road trip. He always had barrels of monkeys in his office at work. You little monkey is still his and my grandma, his mom's favorite term of endearment. You know they love you when they call you a little monkey. Allie loves monkeys too. She always tells me she wants to have a pet monkey so she can wash it in the sink, which is weird. Unfortunately, that's illegal. Sorry, Allie. Oh my gosh, look at how beautiful it is out here. Wait a minute, look at that. There's a butterfly house. I can't remember if I've ever been in a butterfly house here in Epcot. I'm so excited, I love butterflies. Oh, wow, at first glance, all I was noticing were the flying butterflies. But as I look around now, there are so many everywhere, just, just chilling. Dude, they are literally everywhere. Look at that. Look at how beautiful. Some of them are so fancy. Typically, I only see fancy butterflies pinned to a board, which is uh, which is never that impressive, honestly. I definitely prefer this way of seeing them. Look at Allie. She's so happy. She loves butterflies. All I can think of right now are the Hungry Hungry Caterpillar and that Spongebob episode where they keep seeing the butterfly and screaming bloody murder. Oh, I love that one. Who knew it could be so much fun to stare at bugs? Oh, it was really hard to tear Allie away from the butterfly house. I had to lure her out with the promise of food. Oh my gosh, look at this. So that's how they catch all the butterflies. They send Winnie the Pooh out with a net. Okay, that is Kind of amazing. That's the kind of poo I'm into. A productive poo. It's actually not the only character I've seen so far. I also saw Joy over here a few minutes ago. But as neat as both of them are, look at this. 
Topiary figment. I love topiaries. I love figment. This is a great double whammy. Oh, and look at this. I just noticed in the distance against that wall, they've got a set of figment wings. Okay, that is cool. There's a tall one for me and a small one for you, Allie. Oh, I've got to get in on this. Fun pick. Wow, that's a really small one if you have to duck down. Aw, oh, look at you. You're the girl of my imagination. I guess it's not as good as Girl of My Dreams. I should have said that instead. Imagination. Oh, look at this. We could barely make it into the park. So many epic topiaries. I want to make progress. I want to move forward a little faster. But there's just so much to see around every corner. Dude. Yes. Finally. For years I've been coming here like right when they remove all of this. One year I drove all the way across country. Filming episodes all along the way. I got here, took a chill pill at the Polynesian Resort. All this was set up. I was so excited to come back and film it. And then literally the next day when I came back to see all the flowers, more than half of them were gone. I was like, oh no! The only thing that could make this picture better right here would be seeing the monorail come through all this color. Unfortunately, I don't think the Epcot monorails are running right now. I'm not sure if that's a pandemic thing or a construction thing, but I haven't even seen one going along that track the entire time we've been at Walt Disney World so far. Whoa, look at the shine to that. They really goofed up. <laughs> oh man, I am so excited to see all of these familiar faces again, even in topiary form. This has got to be the prettiest festival of all of the festivals. Oh man, I really want to head off into World Showcase and go cruising around the world again. But I guess first, before we do that, we should check out the other half of Future World over here. We don't want to miss out on any topiaries. Oh, look at this. These are purple martin nests. I think I see one of the purple martins right there. Even birds live in futuristic houses here in Future World. Oh, it says they are social birds. Which means when they get together, they're social networking. Just like Mark Zuckerberg. Ah, I see some spots here that would normally be buzzing with festival activity are looking a little bare about all the pandemic stuff and everything. I even forget about the mask. And then I'm jolted back to the reality of like, oh yeah, social distancing and all that. It doesn't seem to be too much of a problem out here though. Not outside anyway. Look at that. Plenty of space to take in some of these displays and enjoy all the plants. Ooh, that reminds me. I gotta buy some more bug spray later. All right, I can see people chowing down. I guess we better pick up the pace so we can join them soon. Now, I'm a silver linings guy. I have to be or else I would never want to wake up again, you know? I must say, among the many silver linings I've sort of been able to find in the past year or so, one that I'm sort of selfishly happy about is the fact that a lot of the construction and changes here at Epcot have been massively slowed down. Like by now, for example, Spaceship Earth would have been closed so they could change it and upgrade it, but at the moment, they reopened it as is. Just lots of other little delays like that that help me to enjoy the Epcot I know and love for just a little bit longer. Seems like they've been working on the demolition of the Communicore buildings the whole time and I just keep thinking, man, they must be practically indestructible. There's so many guys still working on that even to this very moment and it's still standing. Oh man, so many other changes though are still cruising on forward. Next year will be the 40th anniversary of Epcot, which would be huge enough in itself Self, but with all the changes, it's really gonna be like visiting a whole brand new park. Man, oh man, I got a whole bunch of plans for later on in this trip. You history buffs, you friends of mine that enjoy the past here at Epcot, I think you're gonna enjoy what I've got in store for you. All right, well, there doesn't seem to be too much going on in this area. So Allie's gonna check her notes and we're gonna start hunting for some food. Hungry. Ooh, our first sign of grub the sunshine griddle. I love the look of it. Unfortunately, it's not on our list for gluten-free stuff. So I think we'll keep moving on for the moment. Ooh, we might have to come back later though. They've got a Fruit Loops shake and Ali loves Fruit Loops. Luckily for me, I happen to know that both Mexico and Canada have some gluten-free stuff. So we're not too far off. Either way we go. First though, we've got to stop in the old Odyssey building if it's open. Not because I know of any food in there, just because I have to use the restroom. Oh. Uno momento, por favor. Yes. That's it. 
Oh man, I almost forgot about the Ratatouille ride. There were so many rumors that it would be opening up today. I'm not sure that that's actually going to happen. There were so many rumors flying around about when it would open. Everyone's asking me if I'm so excited to ride it, but we've already ridden it in Paris at the original version of the ride. So you can see exactly what we thought of it if you just go back on this channel and look for that. Not to mention a lot of other videos at Disneyland Paris. This is the only ride I'd really go bonkers for. I wish they'd find a way to bring that back. I know they'll never be able to dethrone Queen Elsa or her little frozen friend Olaf. But I can dream, friends. I can dream. All right. After a long, long absence, we're finally off to see the world. Showcase, that is. Oh, I'm so happy to be back. I can't decide which way to go. I mean, do I head off towards Canada or do I head down to sunny Mexico? Well, the stuff in Mexico looks really good. All right then, Mexico it is. Apparently I can have almost everything here in Mexico. Por qué, you ask? Because they're using corn tortillas instead of that detestable wheat. We got gluten-friendly tostadas, chorizo, and tacos. So of course, I have to go for the taco. It's beef. Oh, look at that. Ooh, and don't forget the beverage. Ah, oh. Yeah. Mm. Oh my gosh, that is the best thing I've eaten in so long. It's also the only thing I've eaten in so long. How's that? So good. We've got to push on. It's a small world after all, but it's still, you know, more than a mile around the loop. So I know we've got to get a move on, but seriously, I don't even really want to now. Even though they're kind of pricey, I just sort of want to sit there, buy 10 tacos, you know, spend like $70 and just eat tacos all day. They're so good. Ooh, wait a minute. Behind this line here, for the restaurant inside the pyramid, I can see there's a little tropical rainforest display with a whole bunch of orchids. Ooh, see now most bromeliads like that I'm actually allergic to. It's like one of the only things that if I touch them, I will get high. I only figured that out because I used to go touch them all the time just because they're so weird and strange looking. Then I started asking myself, how come every time I go to Home Depot, I break out in hives? Well, it's because I'm touching all the plants. Oh my gosh, look at these things. They're so pretty. My mom would have have a field day with these. My mom has such a green thumb, she actually went back to school after I was already grown and out of the house and became a certified landscape designer and horticulturalist. So if you need your whole garden and landscape designed, uh, I know a lady. What do you think, Allie? They're so pretty. I want these in our backyard. I think, I don't know if it's humid enough in our backyard to grow these. We could probably grow some in the house, but then I'd be in danger of touching this all day. Yeah, then I'd be even more bumpy than normal. Oh my gosh. This isn't the kind of Mexico they show me on TV. All right, inside the pyramid, we'll have to wait. The orchid tour is just this little side ramp here. That was a pretty awesome detour. I can't believe what an awesome detour this was. I just noticed that sign out of the corner of my eye and I'm glad I did because this spot turned out to be gorgeous. Dude, to me, it's always the little details that make Disney parks special in the first place. And like I was saying at Magic Kingdom the other day, kind of the cool part about a lot of the regular stuff being closed in the parks and things being spaced out, and especially not being able to rush from fast pass to fast pass because there are no fast passes, means there's so much extra time to actually take in those little details. Dude, this is crazy. I pulled over just to see Topiary Elsa over here. Then it turned out they've got the real Elsa right over here. Wow. Wow, look at that. She must have blown out a little cool breeze this morning because it's not too bad. I know she can't control the sun, but temperature wise, this is probably the best day we've had out here so far. All right, now for those of you who maybe have never been to Epcot, it is made up of 11 and change pavilions based on 11 different countries ranging from Mexico to Canada to Norway to Japan and everything in between. Guests can experience food and drink and different cultural displays from around the world. And there are a number of attractions wedged into here as well. Like there's a ride in Mexico, there's the frozen ride in Norway, whose socially distanced line, by the way, is so long it stretches all the way to China. And then in China itself, by the way, is that 360 Circle Vision Theater showing a film about China. Oh my gosh, finally, someplace to take a picture. Perfect. Nothing else to see here. Ooh, mm. looks like we're not the only refugees from California. Seeking some free air. Well, you've been here the whole time. I just down the you street. salty old <laughs> sea dog, you. Oh, and speaking of which, there he is. There he is. Dude, it's my OG. 
brother from another mother. Hello. This is weird, dude. It's weird to see. Look at the expansion of all the friends. Once upon a time, people thought we were insane. They still do. Especially you. They really thought you were crazy. And we look at us it. now. We're crazy we together. We did it. Didn't we, buddy? We did it. Oh my gosh. You vlogging, bro? I'm vlogging, bro. You vlogging? I just stole your joke. I hope you appreciate that. Dude, you made it all across the frozen United States. I'm back. I was gonna be in New Mexico at the same time. Same I'm time. watching you drive through Texas and thinking, no. Nope. You were going the other way? You were yeah. coming this way. I was gonna come out this, this Mexico direction. Mexico was okay. Texas was not good. It was the frozen tundra of Texas. Dude, you made it. You're home I didn't now. I followed your advice. I got cold and I stunk my feet. Yes! Yeah! Yeah! Stomp your feet! Well, then you've done your duty. Yeah, I did. Go home! I was walking the beat. <laughs> wow, look at this. Since there are so few meet and greets operating thanks to the pandemic situation, they've got the princesses in a cavalcade here. And look, they're all socially distanced and protected by plastic. Awesome and weird, but also, also awesome. Dude, it's weird to see so many people I know out here. Oh, there goes Katie. She's joining the princesses. All right, well, now that the obligatory greeting of the friends ritual is completed, the real reason we've come here to the outskirts of Germany is because Allie has a lead on another gluten-free treat for me. Something I'm not sure I ever knew existed, that I never desired, I'm sure I certainly never asked for, but that apparently I can no longer live without. Potato pancakes. Ooh, one of them served with caramelized ham and someone named Herb's sour cream. This lady just walked up behind me. She's looking at the menu here and she goes, now, if they don't have margaritas, let's go. I like it. She knows what she wants. Now see, as long as something is gluten-free, I'm at least a little interested, but the reason I've got to try this now is because it looks so weird. Ooh, weird, strange. But kids, gather around. Come closer where your parents can't hear. I've discovered a secret. Sometimes the weirdest, yuckiest looking food is actually the best food. So I am here to give this weirdness a try. Oh, strange. Dude, that looks a lot better than the picture. What is that, just on a waffle fry? Okay, yeah, that is a thousand times better looking than the picture. It was all dark brown in the picture and strange. It still smells weird, all right, here we go. Whoa. Mm. Mm. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh, yeah, mein Freundin, das wird. Well, well, uh, ugh, you have a little German in you, probably. You try that and see how that feels to you. Onions in it? I don't like onions. I don't know what that is. Probably sauerkraut, yeah. I mean, it wasn't that sour, but it's probably some kind of kraut. That, that was unusual. It's not bad, it's just, that's strange. That's a taste you don't taste every day. So you can't get the little hand pieces unless you unless you get a mouthful of the kraut there. Allie said that the taste reminded her of something, so I said, oh, what does it taste like? And she just said, German. Well, I guess we're not much of a food guide, are we? Oh no, the cuckoo clock shop is closed. But how will I go cuckoo now? I'm still trying to wrap my head around all the stuff that's closed versus not closed. Like some of the indoor restaurants that I expected to be closed are still open with limited seating and some of the indoor stores I expected to be open, like the teddy bear toy shop, is closed. No, I'll never have a teddy bear. What's the German word for confusing? Ah, it feels good to be a world traveler again. Face coverings must fully cover your nose and mouth and be worn at all times, including when taking photographs. The exception would be when eating or drinking while stationary. Oh, holy cannoli, we must be back in Italy. Never all that much going on in Italy. Well, there's a lot of wine here, and of course there are some nice food options back there if you can eat the gluten. Sadly, if you have the celiac disease, there's, there's not too much going on here for you. Don't get me wrong, I love to wine. I just don't like to drink that much. <laughs> get it, get it? <laughs> wow, look at these flowers though. Que bella. Wow, it's beautiful. Back here. I don't know if it come back here, so this, this, this doesn't feel like home turf as much. I was just hoping to bump into Geppetto, I guess. Ah, uh, my people. That's probably my great, great, great grandfather right there. 
And this was his grumpy neighbor. I think according to my grandma, I might also be related to this guy. <laughs> That's an insult. <laughs> All right, now if you've been paying close attention, you may have noticed there are a couple of thingamajiggers floating out here in the World Showcase Lagoon. Those things are for the new Harmonious show that I don't believe has started yet. I was asking my buddy World of Micah, like, do those just sit there all the time looking, looking like that forever? And he's like, yeah, I don't think they go back and forth. I think they stay out there. I was like, what? That makes no sense. Uh, I mean, look at those things. Until I saw the concept artwork and I realized when those things are finished, There'll be like giant daytime fountains out there. And that makes a lot more sense. That I think will look spectacular. I was a little confused there. All right, moving on. Finally, just like my grandfather, Bambino go from Italy to America. Where are the streets? They are paved with gold, huh? And the pasta is free. Okay, I'll stop, I'll stop. Oh, finally. America, home of barbecue, burgers, beers probably, best buddies, and of course, freedom. We don't have a lot of time left today, so it's probably not gonna be this visit. But it's been a long time since I've gone in and actually watched the American Adventure, and I love Mark Twain and Benjamin Franklin. Also America, so it's about time I made a little room on my schedule. Unfortunately, they are very strict about no filming, no cameras, nothing like that in there. So oftentimes, I don't even remember that it's in there. And everything old just feels new again, so I'm excited to do all the stuff that I would normally just take for granted. Whoa, look at this. Over here in Japan, they've got a whole bunch of bonsai trees. This one here says it's 50 years old and it's been in training, as they put it for 17. That bonsai tree has been around and being bonsai on for so long it can almost vote. Here's another 17 years of trimming in front of us on a 27 year old tree and beyond it over there, that haunted one, is also apparently 50 years old. Yeah, dude, Mr. Miyagi would love this part. Dude, and as if the bonsai trees weren't impressive enough by themselves, check out this epic topiary dragon. Dude, look at the size of that guy, and look at that view. Come on, dude. That is one cool topiary. <laughs> I've seen a lot of moms today being like, look, kids, look at the topiary, and the kids are like, give me a break, mom. But not the dragon topiary. Oh, no, sir. Even the kids are stopping like, whoa! That's because everybody knows dragons are cool. I must say, though, on the theme of flower and garden, Japan has always got it going on. From the koi fish to the waterfalls. I mean, it always looks like this over here. It reminds me of the Japanese garden at the Huntington Gardens in LA. Very famous place, used in a lot of movies like Memoirs of a Geisha, things like that. It's one of my favorite places that my mom always made me go as a kid, and I've always wanted to go to Japan someday and see some actual Japanese Japanese gardens. Now that. That would be pretty sweet. In the meantime, though, while international travel is still banned, the Epcot Japan suits me just fine. And it just so happens to be one of Allie's favorite places in Walt Disney World because of, well, basically everything in here. She wants this and this. Oh, and she always wants everything Guritama over here. She loves that egg. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. We might be in here for a while now. What? That's me. Pretty sure we're gonna be in here for a while. It's sort of a must stop every time. So uh, we'll, we'll be back in a little bit. All right, I finally got Allie outside of the Fortress of Anime merch. It wasn't easy, and I did have to promise to return. But we got her out. So far, the parks still haven't returned to their sort of pre-COVID hours. And they do close kind of early. I keep having to remind myself of that so I don't dawdle too long, because I don't want to miss anything, dude. Kind of want one of these for my yard. I don't know if they're gonna let me take that in my carry-on though. Dude, whoa, look at the merch. Okay, I like that. Every single thing in here is awesome. 
Why do I like green figment so much? Oh, you're right. He's topiary figment. I thought he was just figment with a different pigment. <laughs> Look at that bird's neck out there. Did you see that? There was a bird swimming in the water. His neck was sticking out. There he was. Well, I thought he was a bird, but actually, it might be a baby Loch Ness monster. Oh my gosh, he disappeared under the water. The World Showcase Lagoon Monster. I never knew there was an Epcot monster before. Essie, the Epcot monster. Wow. I think we've made a major discovery here, guys. Just make sure none of you tell anybody. Shh, we've got to keep the secret. You know, I just realized my legs are sore, but they're not that sore. So you know what that means. That means we're finally starting to rebuild our Walt Disney World stamina. Finally. I can feel my strength returning. <laughs> I can also feel my hunger returning, so it's a good thing we've made it this far. Because supposedly right here between Morocco and France at this little booth here, they've got a couple of gluten-free options that are supposedly not to be missed. I've gotta give it a try, man. This booth has been good to me in the past. During food and wine when it was Brazil and they had those little hidden ones for a couple of years there. Oh my gosh. Okay, after a short spell in line, we've got lamb curry here and shrimp something something. Oh yeah. To be honest with you, with the 2020 belly, eating is the last thing I should be doing, but it's the only time you're allowed to <sighs> pull off the mask and breathe. So you know what? Bon appetit. I can't believe this is happening, but Ali's actually going first on the lamb curry. It tasted different than I expected. It was kind of flavorless. I'm pretty sure she was not eating the actual lamb. She was eating the other stuff that's in there. Cause that has flavor and it is really good. Oops, I just checked the menu. I was eating the plantain. Yeah, that part is plantain. It's like a banana. If you were eating banana and rice, I meanwhile ate a piece of lamb and enjoyed it through. Ooh, spicy. Okay, so we both agree the shrimp not so good. Kind of uh, the thing that you would normally trust to be great, not so great. And the thing that looks so weird right here is actually delicious. Ooh. See kids, I told you, sometimes the gross looking stuff is the best stuff. Oh, you guys, it feels so good to be outside. So amazing to be back in the world showcase. But I don't even mind being back in France. I'm just kidding you guys. France is gorgeous. Both the Epcot one and the real one. I just wish the real one was as warm as the Epcot one sometimes. Whenever I'm in France, it's winter and most of the leaves are gone. Which means all these topiaries would be naked. No, the topiaries keep their leaves. Shh, they would have never known. Come on. Oh yes, look at that. That is beautiful right now. I love this soft glow of sunset out here. And don't tell Allie I said this, but it's even making me kind of actually miss Paris. Now one big change is the last time we were here is that finally they have finished construction apparently on the new Ratatouille ride area, which means Epcot's France section just got a whole lot bigger. Now so far, even though I think they've invited some special guests to ride on it and the ride is apparently operational, I think the only thing actually open down here at the moment are the new restrooms. But apparently the rest of this new France expansion is just about ready. All right, we're trying to come back into the future stroller parking area for the ride. See if we can get a little bit of a better look here. Oh yeah, I would say basically it's slightly mirrored image. It's uh, it's arranged slightly differently, but basically it looks like the twin of the Paris version. I know the inside will be, but the outside looks very similar as well. Man, that turned out really nice. Last time we were here, we were riding the Skyliner over here, staring down at it. It was not nearly this complete on the outside. Anyway, before I forget to mention it again, if you are curious what the original Ratatouille area and Ratatouille ride is like in France, you can find that right here on Random Land. Just go back on this channel or I'll try to remember to put a link in the thingy, you know, the thing. Ah.
C'est bon, non Bonsoir, madame. Bonsoir. Je t'aime, enfant, mon chéri. Enchanté. <laughs> All right, gang. Unfortunately, I don't think Epcot's going to be open for much longer. And I definitely don't want to run out of time to ride Spaceship Earth. So I guess we're going to have to pick up the pace through our last two countries and head across the channel to Great Britain and eventually her weird stepdaughter, Canada. Au revoir, France. Au revoir. I got to say really quick before we get to Britain, I know I probably will, but I never want to miss another flower and garden again. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. And now that the sun is finally down, it feels beautiful out here too. Ah, I give it about 10 minutes till Allie starts complaining about being cold instead of complaining about being hot. Oh my gosh, look how bangarang these are. Peter Pan and Captain Hook. Ooh, he better close his mouth. He looks like a codfish. Not exactly new topiaries out here. I've seen them before, but still impressive. Oh yeah, I remember this from last time. They have the English tea garden again. Oh, and it's in the perfect little spot. Presumably, they're growing actual tea plants in these tea cups, right? It'd be weird if they weren't. Ooh. Now, from what I understand, the United Kingdom pavilion expansion over here, the one that would have included the new Mary Poppins ride, has been placed on hold. Not sure if that's true yet. I am still just dealing with rumors floating at me everywhere. I just got here. I just got back into the thick of things. But if it is true, it's certainly somewhat understandable, you know, with the craziness of the past year and I'm sure much lower profits and a more streamlined budget. I think we'll probably see a lot of the things we were expecting to happen in the near future be put on hold. But then again, at the same time, you know, the whole time people have been saying, oh, it'll take forever for things to recover. I just keep thinking, well, once everybody feels released, I think people will go nuts. Places like this will become extremely crowded for a while. Hey, call me a naive optimist if you want, but I have the feeling that uh, a lot of places are gonna bounce back in a big way. So I don't think people are gonna wanna be spending much time indoors for the next while. And I can't blame him, I'm gonna be right out here with them. Oh, look at all these Winnie the Pooh topiaries. That's been on my bucket list my whole life. I really wanna visit the real life. 100 acre wood. And no exaggeration, that was literally part of my original plan for 2020. And well, we all know how that year turned out. Oh yes, for a second I was worried they got rid of these ones. Topiary Miss Piggy and of course her beau, Kermit the Frog. Or should I say Kermit the Frog here? Ooh, and they're placed in front of a very tantalizing, brightly lit corridor. So we're gonna make a quick stop to appreciate Topiary Mickey and Minnie and then hit our final country, the land my father was born in, Canada. Oh, Canada, my uncle's home and native land. Also, let's face it, probably a bunch of weird cousins I don't even know about. And speaking of weird things, Canada is offering us up our final gluten-free food of the day, at least for this visit. Something I normally wouldn't be running off to the corner store for. Seared scallops. Okay, I don't know when the last time I ate a scallop was. I don't know if I've ever eaten a scallop. In fact, I can't remember anything. All I remember is sitting on my couch watching Tiger King over and over again, wishing I could go outside. That's what I remember. But leaving all that aside, hopefully forever, here we are now at Epcot about to partake in some seared scallop action. Okay, is this the scallop? The scallop right here? Here goes nothing. How does it taste? Not like chicken. Mm -hmm. You don't like it? Mm. <laughs> you can never be Canadian like me. It tastes like nothing I've ever had before. And nothing you ever want to have again? I don't think so. Well, I think that about does it for us. They're closing up, they're wrapping things up around the world here. Our legs are starting to buckle, our faces are starting to break out, at least mine. We've pretty much been burning the candle at both ends since we got here, so I think we could both use a little rest now. Sadly, we dilly-dallied a little too much, took a little too long, and Figment 
is closed for the night. But I think if we're lucky, I think we can still hitch a ride on Spaceship Earth. Now remember, if everything goes according to plan, this is just the beginning of my trip out here. I got some epic Epcot history projects coming up, so many adventures in the other parks, rides, tons of stuff we missed here today, and in greater detail. There's a lot, and I mean a lot on my agenda. Stay tuned, because we're about to go full Walt Disney World, and there are a lot of adventures ahead. For today, though, I think we've done just about all the damage we can do. That's right, friends. For today, we've done our duty. It's time to go home and sleep. Wow. weird including record apparently hello but I think I'm starting to see some shop uh, up do I know that you know that they don't know that the joke is funnier if the topiaries get naked okay okay dude by the way if you guys want a more detailed look at a lot of the gluttony food I can't eat check out Migby and Janelle we Magic Journeys. Together. I know eventually, but these guys right here, they do the ultimate Disney food videos. And we've been friends for a long, long time. Bye, guys. Bye. Ooh, pretty. You know what tea is actually for? What? Tigger. Oh. Right? Yeah, I guess so. Sleep wow. Sleep wow. Sleep wow. I hope I get my voice back because it's hard to do the sleep well, okay? Stop judging me. <laughs>